five is on. Make sure my make sure my levels are right. We are live on Facebook. Make sure we are live. Live is working on IG. And they say they are telling people on IG that I have started a live event. As y'all are coming in, we'll make sure this is working. As y'all are coming in, shout the cells out. Tell me where you're checking in from in the comment section on Facebook and also on Instagram. Get our comment pin here, and we're going to get started in a minute. Since I decided to go with this topic, as you can see, I got at least eight bu bullet points I need to go through here. It might be more than eight. But as y'all coming in, tell me where you're checking in from. And we'll get into it in a second. Hope everybody's having a great week so far. It is Wednesday. It is I'm starting this at 1.58 p.m. Eastern. This might be the... They, I read this book by Daniel Pink called Win. This is what they call sometimes... Researchers call this the trough of the day. This is when you're, you start the day with good energy at the beginning of the day. But then by like mid, late afternoon, your energy starts to dip. And then at the end of the day, let's say near like 4 or 5 o'clock. Then your energy goes back up. So this is a time when energy starts to dip. So hopefully this is a this is something that can help keep your energy up in the middle of the day when it ain't anything else going on and you're tired and you might be falling asleep at your desk or wherever you're at right now. So let this help you out. Let this help you out to stay awake in the middle of the day. <laughs> Birmingham, Alabama's in the house. Shout out to Birmingham. Shout out to Baltimore in the building. Uh, who is that? Lionel's shouting out the Dre Baldwin theme song from back in the day. South Carolina's in the house. Gary, what's going on? Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dre Baldwin. I'm a former nine-year pro athlete. I'm the author of 33 books. I've done four TED Talks. I created this whole brand called Work On Your Game. And what I did with this is real simple. I took all the tools that I learned, all the tools, the mindset and the strategy tools to help athletes get to the top 1% in sports. And I created a system that translates those tools from the sports world to the business world to help professionals like yourselves Perform at a higher level, be more consistent, and make more money. So if you're interested in high performance, consistency, or money, then Work On Your Game is the place for you. I got a university called Work On Your Game University. That's where you can get a real-life education, um, not the nonsense that you'll have no idea how you're ever going to use it in real life that you get on college campuses and in school. I'm not saying drop out of college, but you could drop out of college and just join Work On Your Game University. But that's a different conversation for a different day. I got an event coming up called Work On Your Game Live that's happening in about three weeks, February 3rd and 4th, here in Miami, Florida. That's a Friday and a Saturday. You can get into that event. You can reserve your seat for just $1. Yes, a single George Washington, $1, reserve your seat. We'll take care of the rest of it. Later, we'll defer your payments over the course of a year. That's at, again, workonyourgame.live is where you get your ticket to that event. That is the link in the comments on Facebook. I'm live on Facebook right now. If you're on Instagram, it is the link in my bio on IG. There's also the pinned comment that I have right there. But today, this specific topic is I want to talk about the eight types of people that you want to have around you. And I want to get into this. This is eight types. I got to go through at least eight points here. And this is really for all of you to understand, especially those of you who are trying to build something right now. If you're ambitious if you have goals, you're goal-oriented, goal-focused, and you really want to make big leaps this year. I was talking to somebody, when was this? This is probably about a month ago. I was talking to someone, and they were saying uh, they want to make more money in 2023 than they made in 2022. And I said, how much you want to make next year? All right. this Last year, they made like less than they were making They were probably around 50, 60K. I said, how much you want to make next year? And they said, well, I want to make uh, 10 million. I said, okay. <laughs> I didn't say it's impossible. I mean, it's happened before. But the thing is, if you're going to make that kind of leap in what you're doing in life, or if you want to 10, 20 times, 30 times your results in life, understand you're not going to do that because you got 10 or 20 or 30 times smarter or more intelligent. And it is uh, physically and scientifically impossible for you to work 10 or 20 or 30 times harder. So those things are not going to happen. And I would not bet on getting 10 or 20 or 30 times luckier. So how are you going to get a 10 or 20 X change 10 or 20 x roi from what you did in the past to what you're going to do in the future how can you do that the best way to do this folks is through utilizing other people utilizing other people's brains other people's money other people's knowledge other people's abilities other people's insights other people's whatever just utilizing other people you need to have relationships you got to have the right types of people around you so what i'm going to go over here today i'm going to go over eight different types of people who you want to have in your life and you want to have you and you don't have to have just one of these. You can have as many as possible, but you need to have all of these slots filled. Because if you don't have these slots filled, it's kind of like any of you who's into nutrition 
or you into uh, counting macros and things like that, you know that there are certain uh, certain vitamins and certain uh, what's the word certain nutrients that you need to be getting in your body on a daily basis that if you're not getting them based on what you put in your body, then your body is just basically devoid and is not getting those things at all. So this is why we take multivitamins. This is why we take supplements. This is why we take um, any kind of extras, any kind of supplements you take because you're giving your body what is not getting from the food that you're eating is the same thing with the people. And if you're missing these things with the with the people, then there are certain things you won't be able to achieve. So let's get into it. I'm going to tell you all eight types of people, why these people matter and why you need to get these people around you in your life. So eight types you want to have around you. Number one, and these are in no particular order. Number one, you need an ideas person. What is an ideas person? I mean, this one is pretty simple to understand. An ideas person is the type of individual who is always thinking of new ways to do things. They're the type of person who comes to you with new things that you could do with what you already have going on. They always have some new thing they might do. They maybe have new suggestions for you. So this could be a person who's a friend of yours. Maybe they're a business peer of yours. Maybe they're you no know, kind of doing a similar thing to what you're doing. But they're always every time you talk to them, they're like, oh, well, I'm doing this now. I'm trying this out or look, I tried this, this and this. This won't work the best. You might want to try that for your business. This might work out for you. If they're a person who works in your organization. If they work for you. They're a person who's always coming to you with some new way that maybe we could do things better or maybe we can do things different. These people are usually they usually are coming to you with new ideas because they first of all, they just naturally come up with ideas. But secondly, because they're usually plugged in, they're plugged into what's going on. They're paying attention to what other people are doing or what other people are saying. And they're always thinking about how can I apply this to what I'm doing? You want people around you like this. Now, it doesn't mean you should apply everything that they say, because sometimes they're going to have a bad idea. You come up with a lot of ideas. Not all of them are going to be good, but you need people around you who have good ideas because good ideas are the only way that things move forward. So if you look around in the world right now, you look at these devices that we have. The only reason these exist is because somebody came up with an idea. Only reason that we have live streaming right now, what I'm doing right now, is because somebody had the idea to do it. Everything that we have in our world today somebody came up with the idea for it. So you want people around you who have ideas. They are valuable individuals. Your job is to discern which ideas we're going to try, which ideas we're going to get rid of. Moving on to point number two, we are talking to eight types of people who you want to have around you in life. Number two person is the learning person, the learner. What is a learner? The learner is the type of person who is always taking courses. They're the type of person who attends events. They're the type of person who's watching informative YouTube videos. And if you look at their TikTok, they're looking at informative stuff. They're learning things. They're the type of person who is inquiring minds want to know. They're reading articles. They are reading books. They're studying journals. They're reading. They're always taking in new information. Often they're doing this via reading because the deepest information is usually written and is not spoken. These are people who are always getting new information. They're always buying books off Amazon. If libraries were still popular, they'd be they'd be the type of person who was hanging in a library before you could get all your information on the Internet. These are people who are just they're just bookworms, information people. You want these people around you because they are always looking for new knowledge, new information. They want to be smarter. And when they get new information, usually they want someone who they can share that new information with. You want these people around you because these are the type of people who keep you plugged in to what's going on. They have their ear to the street, so to speak in your particular space. So you don't want people who just get information about anything, but sometimes that can be useful too. And But when you combine the learner with the first person, which is the ideas person, you can get some really great breakthroughs. A person who's always learning new information and a person who always has new ideas, when the learner shares their new information with the ideas person, the ideas person can come up with 30 ideas is based on one piece of new information. That's why you wanna have these people around. And when you get these people together, great things can take place. So you want people around you who are always taking in new information and you should be a, a learning person, especially if you're an entrepreneur. Any entrepreneurs listening to this right now, you should absolutely be a learner individual because you need to be knowing what's going on in your space. Whatever you do entrepreneurially, whatever you sell, anything that involves selling or marketing or advertising, you should be a learner in that space because no matter what you sell, you got to do those three things, sell, market, advertise. And then whatever you do specifically, you need to know what's going on. So if you sell cars, for example, you need to be you need to be reading trade journals about the automobile industry. If you are in the coaching business, you need to know who are people who have information about what's going on in the coaching industry. You need to be reading that. You need to be subscribed to those email newsletters. You need to be getting that information. You need to be following those people, whoever they are, who have the information 
because that information is what's going to keep you plugged in to what's going on so you don't find yourself behind the eight ball. If you are not learning, folks, you are dying. You need to be around people who are thirsty for knowledge and who are able to share that knowledge with you when they get it. So that's person number two. Person number three, we're talking about the eight types of people you want to have around you. And like third type of person is the action taker. All right, this is a person who actually goes and does stuff. Now, the ideas person might have an idea. But doesn't mean they're actually going to do it. The learning person got the information. Doesn't mean they're going to do anything with it. You need an action taker who will actually implement information. So when you listen to the, the learner who tells you about the new information, you listen to the ideas person who says, well, let's take that information and let's do this, this, and this. Now the action taker is the person who actually take all of that and actually go do something with it. They will actually go put it into action. So it becomes a real thing. Action takers, the type of individual who usually can't really sit still. They're always doing something new. They're always hard work at you know, whatever things that they're going to do. If any of you has ever read and all you should go do this when this live is over, let me tell you something that you're going to go do. You're going to go look up, just look this up on Google, Amazon's uh, principles for leaders. I think it's, it's 14 principles of leadership that Amazon has. So this is part of their internal documentation, but they put it out publicly so everybody can see it. So when this is over or if you got a computer next to you right now, look up Amazon's 14 principles of leadership. This is what they require of anyone who's going to get into a leadership position working at Amazon. Amazon is a billion dollar company. So if you're going to be a leader at Amazon, you need to follow those principles. Go look those principles up and look at them. I did a whole two part podcast series on this a couple of years back. But one of the principles is having a bias for action. That's one of the 14 Amazon leadership principles. You got to be an action taker, not a person thinking about what to do, not a person who suggests what to do. You got to be a person who actually goes and does things. If you're not doing stuff, you cannot be a leader here at Amazon. Action biased people. And I talk about having an action bias as well. I did a reel on that probably a month or so ago. Action biased people. Sometimes you take an action that ends up not working. All right. It doesn't mean just because you take action all the time doesn't mean your actions always work. Sometimes your action does not work. But an action biased individual can always be redirected to better and smarter action. Again, that's why you want to have all of these people. So if you have an action biased individual, you get the learner around them who actually knows the information. You get the ideas person around them and all of them are working together. And you as the person in charge, you can direct that action biased person towards the action that's actually going to work. So is the action that they're about. So get some of these people in your circle. It'd be great if you had a few action biased individuals in your circle, because that means you'll always have activity going on. Uh, you always have some heat. You always have something moving around in your organization when you have action. You know what heat is? Heat is when there's more movement happening in the atmosphere. When there's less movement in the atmosphere and things are stagnant, that's when you get cold air. Cold air is when there's less movement. When there's more movement, you get heat. So you want action in your uh, environment so that you can keep things hot, you can keep things moving. Number four, we're talking to eight types of people that you want to have around you in your life and in your career. Number four is a cheerleader slash advocate. Who is that person? They're exactly as I said, they're the cheerleader. All right. This is the person who is it's kind of like um, if you ever seen a rapper performing on stage at a concert, and you know how they had a hype man on the stage with them. All right. That's your hype man. All right, the cheerleader slash advocate is your hype man. It doesn't have to be a man, it can be a man or a woman. That's the person who just believes in your stuff so much. They are so bought into you, into your program, into your organization, your company, whatever it is, your career. They're just really bought into it. And they're the type of person who's always just hyping you up, talking you up. They go talk to somebody who never heard of you before and you're not even there. And they just sold you as if you're like the greatest thing since sliced bread to every person that they meet. That's your that's your number two person. That's your lieutenant. That's the person who will always defend you. They were always talking you up. They will make you sound like, again, the greatest person ever in history. If you play basketball, they'll talk about you like you're Michael Jordan. If you are a musician, they'll talk about you like you're Taylor Swift or Drake. If you're a, a TV, you had a TV show, they'll talk about you like you're Oprah. All right, they will just make you sound like you're the greatest person ever in history. You want cheerleaders and advocates around you. Often, the cheerleaders and advocates are people who emerge. Either you've known them for a long time, since, like since you first started, or these are people who will emerge from your fan base. So if you have an audience, you have people who are already consuming your material. Some of your best cheerleaders and advocates are people who are naturally into your stuff. They've already been into your stuff. They've been following your stuff, consuming your material, whether that's buying your music, reading your books, sign up for your courses, coming to your events, whatever it is that they're doing. They're already a very strong advocate for what you're doing. 
and you want to get them, maybe get a couple of these people into your world because they will be defending you, advocating for you, and again, making you sound and look like a superstar, even if you're not that good. Because a good cheerleader will make someone who's a level eight sound like a level 10. And they'll make someone who's a level 10 sound like they're a level 20. That's what a good cheerleader does. So you want these people around you. They're very happy when you succeed. They want to know what you're going to do next, and they're going to help promote it. They tell other people about you, even if you don't ask them to do it. All right, they, are, they basically sell your stuff to other people without you, even, without you even wanting them to do it. They get mad if you don't win the award. They're the type of people who go on the Internet and argue with other people to defend you. They're in the comment section arguing with somebody who they never met about you because that person says something that they don't like. All right, those are, your, those are the people who you want around you. All right, and again, these are the people who they, sometimes they might even annoy you because they're always trying to push you to do more stuff and go further and go harder, but they are your advocates. All right, they really want to see you win. They want to see you win more than they want to win themselves. And these are the people, again, you want to get some cheerleaders around you. Give you an example of a cheerleader is, if you saw the movie Eight Mile, you remember the, who the guy, uh, Makai Pfeiffer, Played in Eight Mile, he was always hyping up B Rabbit, who was Eminem, and always hyping him up like, "Man, you gonna get in this battle?" He was signing him up to battle, and eventually Eminem got mad at him because he kept signing Eminem up to battle, and Eminem didn't even want to battle. But he was an advocate; he was a strong advocate for him. You need at least one of those people around you in life; they will defend you to their death. So value those individuals. Number five, we're talking eight types of people who you want to have around you in life. Number five are the listeners slash instruction followers. This is not the same as a cheerleader or advocate. Now, a cheerleader or advocate will go on their own volition and talk you up and make you like a celebrity or a superstar. The listener slash instruction follower waits for you to tell them what to do and they just go do it. They will go execute on whatever you say. This, these people can also be known as soldiers. You want some soldiers around you because they can go and get things done. These are the get shit done individuals. These are the foot soldiers. These are the ones who can, you could even send them to take care of some dirty work that maybe you don't want to do yourself. These, any of you who's in a leadership, excuse me, or a management position, let me ask you a question. Any of you who's ever been in that position, how hard is it for you to find someone who you tell them what to do and they actually do what you tell them what to do? Any of you who's ever been in a leadership or management position, you know that even though that sounds very simple, it's very hard to find people who when you tell them what to do, they do exactly what you tell them to do. Now, I know a lot of people who are in these positions of leadership. I know a lot of CEOs, a lot of people who run their own organizations. And when I talk to them about their teams, one of the common complaints that I hear from people is I told this individual to do something and they're doing like 30 percent of what I told them to do. They're doing 60 percent of what I told them to do. They did 80 percent of what I told them to do. They didn't do everything I told them to do. So, Frankie, I see in the comments that you say it's hard. It's very hard to find somebody who will just do exactly what you tell them to do. You tell them to do these seven things and they do all seven. It's very hard to find that person, even though it seems like that would be very easy. That if you just lay out everything a person is supposed to do, that they're just going to do it. No, that is not true. All right. Human beings are sometimes people just don't comprehend and they don't execute. So when you find people who will execute on exactly what you tell them, them to do, you need to get as many of these people around you as possible. Anyone who owns a business. Anyone who's ever had employees, anyone who's ever been, even if you're in management and you have people who are subordinate to you and you are have authority over them to tell them what to do, you know how valuable it is to find someone who just execute. They don't even have to be that great. They just execute whatever you tell them to do. They will do 100 percent of what they're told to do. You give them a job and you know the job is going to get done. It's going to get done and it's going to get done right. and It's going to be done right the first time. If you do not know how hard it is to find people who will do this. Go get yourself some employees and you will find out very quickly. Point number six, we're talking about the eight types of people who you want to have around you in life. Number six, you want the positive and the chronically happy around you. Chronically happy, positive individuals. These are the people who it could be though. You could have just gotten the worst news ever. And the first thing out of their mouths is they found a positive about the situation. They found the silver lining in the, the gray clouds that are hanging over the heads of you and your organization. This person is always upbeat. They are always finding the positive. They're always looking for a, a positive winning angle to every situation. And this is not I'm not talking about the fake bubbly individuals. If you ever know somebody who's kind of like that fake happy to, and you could tell that they're just pretending to be happy all the time. 
I'm not talking about that type of individual. I'm talking about a person who is literally always positive. They're always looking for the positive in anything. They can find a positive in everything. And their positive vibes cannot be outweighed by anybody else's negative energy. You bring a negative person around this person, they will change that negative person to positive or they'll chase the negative person away. They can't, their energy cannot be taken away and cannot be changed by anyone or anything else. Their energy always wins. That's what I mean by chronically positive. They're so chronically positive that it becomes, it becomes, uh, what's the word? It basically becomes infectious that they pass it around to everybody else. Everyone else feels more positive when this person is in the room because of their energy. It's contagious, that positive energy that they have. You want these people around you because no matter what you're trying to do, and especially if you're very ambitious and you have big goals, you're going to face some challenges and whatever you're going after. There are going to be some times when things are simply not working the way that you want them to. The more of these positive people you have around you, the easier it will be for you to pick yourself up off the ground and keep going, even though things are not working. And all of us have times in life when things are not working. So the more you can keep these positive energies and positive vibes around you, especially if it's coming from a person who this is their natural state the better it will be for you. That's person number six. Person number seven, we're talking to eight types of people who you want to keep around you in life. Number seven is the gregarious. What does that mean? For those not familiar with the word, gregarious means fond of company or sociable. These are the people who are extroverts. They love to be around other people. They hate to be by themselves. They are always in the company of other people. The gregarious is the type of person who you tell them to meet you at some event where there's a whole bunch of people there and they don't know anybody at that event, but they get there 20 minutes before you get there and you're concerned because you're like, damn, they got there 20 minutes before me. They don't know anybody. They're going to be standing in the corner by themselves. Then you get there and they know everybody in the room. They already done made friends with everyone in the room. You get there and they start introducing you to people that you didn't even know. That's the gregarious person. That's the type of person who says, don't worry about sending me somewhere where I don't know anybody. I will get to know everybody within five minutes. That's the type of person who no matter where they go, they always make friends. They always know somebody. They always know people everywhere. And if you send them somewhere where they don't know anybody, they will quickly start knowing everybody. That's just their energy. That's just their natural state. They are not concerned with being by themselves because they always make friends. They always know a bunch of people. They always got a bunch of numbers in their Rolodex. Everywhere they go, there's just somebody who knows them somehow, somewhere. That's a gregarious, sociable individual. You want these people in your world because this is a principle that uh, all of you should keep in mind. There is never a downside to knowing more people and having a positive relationship with them. Now, it's a downside to having negative relationships with a bunch of people, a bunch of enemies. But there is no downside to having a bunch of people who have a positive, uh, positive impression of you. So if you have one of these gregarious people around you, especially if they're one of your cheerleaders or advocates, Oh, that person is like jet, that person like jet fuel on your business because what they're going to do is make a whole bunch of other people like you and the other people don't even know why they like you. They just like you because they like that person. So if you have one of these people around you, that gregarious, sociable individual, especially if you're not that type of person, you need to keep that person around. So if that means giving them a raise. It means uh, keeping them close, whatever you got to do. You want to keep these people around, especially if you're an introverted type of individual. You don't really like talking to people. You don't like going around shaking hands and glad handing. You're not the type of person to go to networking events. You're not really that sociable. You don't like talking to people, small talking in elevators. If you're not that type, you need to have one of these people in your world because they will do for you what you are not doing for you. And understand that when you're in the world, folks, especially when you're around a place where there are people who are making things happen, you never know who knows what and who knows who. So you want to be building relationships. The gregarious type of person is always building relationships. Every day they didn't met somebody new. Every week they made new friends. You want these people around. And I'm not saying that you need to be this all the time because the more people you know, now your phone's ringing more often. You got emails, you got text messages coming in. People are inviting you places. And the more time you spend talking to all these other people, the less time you have to actually do your work. So you don't need to be this person yourself. But you need to have one of these people in your world because they're out there building relationships and making net and networking and making connections on your behalf when you are not doing it. So you want to be looking for these type of people when you come across one of them, as long as you can deal with them and you can kind of uh, keep them in, a, in the space that you need them in. So where they're not bothering you so much, but they're out there doing their thing and maybe doing it on your behalf. This is great. So you want those gregarious individuals 
Uh, you want those gregarious individuals uh, in your world. Everywhere they go, they know people. They can get people to do favors for them who usually say no. They'll talk to anyone. Uh, they're not afraid to pick up the phone and go directly to a situation. Uh, you want these people around. You don't have one, go get one. Number eight, we are talking eight types of people you want around you. Number eight is the closer. What is the closer? Closer is the person who finishes the deal. Closer is the person who gets things done, done. Not just done, but done, done. That's the closer. Closer is the person who gets things completed. This is the person who maybe you tried to get something done over and over again. They were unable, you were unable to get it done, but then you send the closer in, they go get the job done. All right, the closer is the person who, all right, they get something done and you don't even want to know how they did it. All right, just let me know that it's done. Don't even tell me what you did. Just tell me that it's done. That's the closer. Closer is usually a person who is a, in the sales world, we usually call this person a shark. Shark is the person who's all about the win. They're all about the win. They're the type of person who wants a job that is fully on commission. All right, just give me 50% commission on everything I close. I'll close the deal. And I'm like, all right, cool. You close that deal. You sell a $10,000 product. You get 5,000. I get 5,000. I don't even want to know what you said to them. Just tell me where the money's at and we're good. All right, that's the closer. This is the person who wants, they want that job. You don't have to convince them to get the job. They're looking for someone to give them that job. That's the closer. They are like, look, just tell me what the goal is. Tell me what the outcome is that you want, and I'm going to go get the outcome. All right, don't ask me any questions. Don't tell me how to do it. Just tell me what the goal is, and I'm going to get it done. That's the closer. You want that closer around you. This is the type of person who, if they need to, they will use an iron fist, so to speak, to get the job done. All right. Then this is not the same. A closer is not the same as an instruction follower. All right. The, the person I talked about earlier, the instruction follower, this is not the same as the closer. The instruction follower does what you tell them to do. The closer says, don't tell me how to do my job. Just tell me what the job is and I'm going to get it done. You understand the difference? That's the closer. And the closer is the type because the instruction follower is a person who's a dutiful worker. I get a list of 10 steps to follow. They follow all 10 steps. They do not do anything extra. They do only what I told them to do. The closer says, don't tell me any steps. Just tell me what to get done. I'll do it myself. They, this is a person with a killer instinct. Closer is the killer instinct individual who sees they're like a, a dog chasing after a, a, a meat truck. All right, that's the closer. You need a closer in your world. And ideally, also, you want to be a closer yourself, too. All right, you can have a closers around, but you want to be a closer yourself, too. Sales organization, any organization that does sales and they sell directly to, and they, especially if they sell directly to customers, they have a lot of closers in their organizations. They are, they are people who do a lot of closing. I go to a lot of events and I deal with a lot of people who are a lot of entrepreneurs, some people with small organizations, some people with bigger organizations. There are some organizations out there that have a lot of closers in their in their world that I know. I know when I come into their world, if I go to their website, if I put any piece of information of mine into their into their system, I know I'm going to get on a closer is going to call me. I know I'm getting a phone call from a closer. I know it's coming. I already know because they got closers in their organization and I know how they do. And those closers, those are, those are people collecting money. So if you are interested in making more money in your business and I've never met, I mean, coaching, my first coaching client that I ever had was in 2015 In eight years in being in business, I've never, ever talked to a person, whether they became a client or they were just a prospect and they didn't even work with me. I've never had a person tell me, Dre, I want to make the same amount of money next year that I made last year. Nobody ever says that. Everybody says they want to make more money. So I'm going to assume everyone listening to me right now wants to make more money this year than you made last year. Here's the key. If you want to make more money, you need closers. The more closers you have in your world, the more money you will make. And the more you become a closer, the more money you will make. A closer is a person who is focused on the outcome. The outcome is close the deal. Okay. The better you get at closing the deal and the more people you have around you who are focused on closing the deal, the more money you will make. You have to be a closer if you want to make more money. All right. This is a mindset of being a closer. There are different ways to close, but you got to have the mindset of being a closer. And if you have a closer on your team working for you, give them as much commission as they want because they will bring in more money to you than you would ever bring in by yourself. You want those closers. And here's point number nine. So now I gave you all eight people. I'm going to recap all eight in a second. If you got a question, put it in the comments. I'm going to take questions in a second. But here's point number nine. One more point. Final notes of everything that I said. You need to have as much of each of these individuals in you as possible. So every person that I mentioned, all eight types, you need to see how much of each one of these you have in yourself already. And here's the thing. 
Anything that you know is not you, it's not your natural thing, it's just not your character to be that type of person, any one of these eight, you need to go find that person ASAP. So when you're looking for who's the next person you hire, or if you never hired anybody, you're looking for who's the first type of person you hire, maybe you know what job you want them to do, but you need to be looking at their, their personality and their character. You want to find a person who kind of fits that personality that you need. So if you don't have a person who's an instruction follower, and let's say you want to hire a, um, you want to hire someone like a graphic designer, right? You want to find it because they're a different type. Graphic designers still have personalities. They're still human. So you want a graphic designer who's a closer. You want one who's a cheerleader. You want one who's an instruction follower. Do you want one who's gregarious? They all have different personalities. Because some graphic designers don't want to talk to anybody. They just want, give me my instructions and they don't really talk that much. Then there are some who want to talk to you all day. So you need to look at their personalities and their energies as well as the job that you want them to do. So that's uh, how you need to fill the gaps of what you are missing. So I'm going to recap these eight. Then I'm going to take questions. I see this question. I see a question that I just got from I am Nuni. She said, what do you do with prospects looking for respect? Tell me a little bit more about what you mean by that. And let me recap these points and I'm going to answer the question. So we're talking about the eight types of people you want to have around you. Eight types. Here we are. Number one, the idea person. These persons, are they always popping off with new ideas? Might be good, might be bad, but you want ideas. Ideas are the things that move us forward. Number two, learners. Always taking in new information. They're always reading a new book. They always read some new study. They're, they're watching informative TikTok videos and informative YouTube videos. They're always learning something new. They're like libraries of information. Number three, action takers. These are people who just want to go do stuff. Give me something to do. They do not want to sit around. They don't want to read books. They want to go do something. Give them a task and they will go and get it done. That's what they're about. Amazon says, you want to be a leader at Amazon, you must have a bias for action. Number four, cheerleaders and advocates. These are people who are big fans of your work. They will defend you tooth and nail. They will defend you to the death. They will make you sound like you're greater than you even are because they are big fans of you. Usually these people emerge from inside of your, your already existing fan base or audience. Number five, Listeners and instruction followers. These are people you get them seven things to do. They do all seven. They don't do eight things. They don't do six. They do everything you tell them to do, not more and not less. These are people who basically follow the rules. They follow instructions. You want these people around you because you know what you're going to get from them. Number six, positive and chronically happy. These are people who find a positive in every situation. Even when everything looks terrible, they find a positive for it. They are chronically happy. Are they always they always bring the energy up in the room because they are always positive. Number seven, the gregarious. These are people who no matter where they go, they always make new friends. They are very sociable. You can send them to an event where they don't know anybody. By the end of the night, they know 30 people in the room and everybody knows them. They got everybody's phone number. They got new friends, new connections. They got friends everywhere, connections everywhere, relationships everywhere because they always are meeting new people. They're extroverts. They hate being by themselves. They love being within company. Number eight is the closer. These are the killer instinct people who just want to get things done. They do not want instructions. Don't tell them how to do it. Just tell them what you want done and they will call you three days later and say it's done. They won't explain to you how they got it done. You don't want to know how they got it done. You just know that they got it done. If you want to make more money this year than you made last year, then you need closers around you. You need to have the mentality of a closer yourself. And point number nine, final note, you want to have as much of these elements, these personality traits within yourself as possible. Any one of these that is not really you, you know, it's not really your character or your personality. That's the one that you need to fill that gap. You need to get that type of person around you. The most important one, if you're focused on money, is the closer. Most important one, if you're focused on relationships, is gregarious. If you're the type of person who is prone to maybe uh, beating yourself up, you want the positive and chronically happy. If you're a type of person who just wants somebody to just follow what you say because you know exactly what needs to be done, you want the listener and instruction follower. If you're someone who just needs to build up your own confidence, you want the cheerleaders and the advocates. If you're a person who has found yourself hesitating to do things, you want an action taker. If you're a person who doesn't really like reading or getting new information, you want the learners. And if you're a person who struggles to come up with new ideas, you want the idea person. So you see how there's different gaps that can be filled with different types of individuals. And ideally, you have eight people working for you and each one of them fills each one of these gaps. So you can have 80, you had 10 of each one. But you got to be able to organize these people and you as the person in charge, you got to be able to manage these individuals because you have to manage the personalities because different personalities can clash when they're doing different things. Like the ideas person and the, the closer don't really mix because ideas person always talking about all these new things we could do. The closer is like, all right, what are we going to do? Forget all that. So this is all part of that's that becomes the management issue it was a different conversation for a different day. So let's see what we got here. Um. Uh, Frankie, I'll answer Frankie's question first and I'll come back to you, Nooney. I think I had a question up earlier. 
I'm just scrolling through the questions here. So somebody got a question, put it in the comment section. A uh, question earlier was, where can I find online jobs part-time for undergrad students? So I mean, if you're an undergrad college student and you don't know how to find a job, you got much bigger problems than anything I can answer here on Instagram. You're a college student. You know how to use the internet. Ask me a better question. Frankie says, with closer, does it matter if their style or approach isn't what you like? Not really. Doesn't really matter. I mean, what's the most important thing to you? Is it getting the deals done? If the most important thing is getting the deals done, as long as they're not breaking the law and they're not doing anything unethical, then again, a true closer does not want to have to explain to you how they're doing things. I know some closers. I got some closers who uh, work with me in different ways and they even tell me directly, look, Dre, I don't want to, I want to do things the way I do them. I know what I'm doing. I've been doing, I've done this before. Just tell me what the product is. Tell me when somebody's ready to buy, where they got to go to give the money. And that's it. And I say, all right, if you, if you can close the deal, I don't care how you do it. Just don't break the law. All right. Don't make me look bad. As long as you're ethical, I don't care how you do it. Get the deal done. Closers don't want to be told what to do. And they really don't want to have to explain themselves to you, Frankie. So to answer you, hopefully that answers your question there. Their approach or style doesn't have to be your approach or style. They just have to get the job done. And again, if your focus is getting the job done, then it shouldn't even matter to you. Nooney says, underdog, overlooked, intelligent, yet peculiar, respect, revenge, the second on the list, money being number three. Humanity is number one. What do you mean by humanity? I mean, we're already human. When you say humanity is number one, respect, revenge is second on the list. Money is number three. Well, how do they get their respect or revenge? By, by what means? If it's more important than money, are they they're just trying to prove a point? If that's what you mean, really, you would have to you would want to dig into that person, really figure out you know, what is what is the win for them? What does that win look like for that individual? This is when you have a closer. You tell them what the win is. All right, The win is this is the product. This is how much it costs. This is how much money you need to collect. Go. It's like it's like you got a, a hungry dog. Any of you ever seen dog fighting? Not that I advocate dog fighting, but when you see you see people dog fighting, it's the dog is just ready to get off the leash. All you got to do is let it go. And the dog goes and does what the dog's going to do. That's the killer. That's the closer. That's the kind of person that you want. And that's the dog is that closer going and getting the money. That's the closer. And if you're interested in making money, you want to employ closers. And actually, if you're interested in making more money, you need to be a closer. You need to become a closer. And becoming a closer doesn't mean you need to be uh, abrasive or negative in any way. You need to be aggressive, mentally aggressive. You don't have to be verbally aggressive, but you have to be aggressive and going after what you want. You're going to be a closer. So if I could take a couple more questions, I'll take them. Go ahead, post them in the comments if you got one. My next event, Working Your Game Live, three weeks from now, February 3rd and 4th, Miami, Florida. You can get in for $1. You can get into this event. Again, that's at workonyourgame.live. The link is in the comments on Facebook. It's in my bio on Instagram. Also, the pinned comment right there. We are talking to eight types of people who you want to have around you. And any of you who goes and gets a, um, any of you goes and gets a job, you want to look at these eight types and ask yourself, which one are you? What void are you filling for the person who's in charge? Which one of these people are you becoming for the people who you are serving? Because the better that you can fill one of these roles, the more valuable that you become, especially if there isn't another one in the organization. If you're the only closer or you're the only ideas person, you're the only action taker, the only listener, the only positive, the only gregarious, the only whatever, then you become more valuable because you're harder to replace. Now, if there's 30 of you, if there's 30 action takers in the room, then, well, you can leave and they might not notice. So you want to figure out what void you are filling. The, the uh, less circulation of a thing, the higher its value. All right, glad I answered your question there, Noon. All right, so work on your game live. Y'all see the link for that. Get your ticket to that event. You can text me at, so let me put my text number in here. Any of you who's not in my text community yet, I send out a daily motivation text every single day for free to everyone who's in my text community. Text me at that number. I just put in the comments in the chat. The number is 305-384-6894 every day when I send out the daily motivation. If you would like to get that daily motivation text, text me at that number. I'm put it in the Facebook chat as well. I just got to find the emoji for the phone. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. All right. So if you want to get my daily motivation text and you are on Facebook, I just put it in the, let me make sure I put it in there before I say anything. 
All right, just put it in the comments also on Facebook. So if you want to get that daily motivation text and you are on Facebook, where's the comments at? There it is. Then you can actually text me at that number as well. 305-384-6894 is where you get the daily motivation text. All right, everybody. I got an interview coming up in two hours. So I'm going to get a little bit more work done and have uh, another meal before that interview comes up. But I'll be safe. I'm going to put this on. Um, it'll be on YouTube. It'll go up on YouTube. It'll probably go on the, the live archive on IG as well. But I put it on YouTube. It's also on my Facebook page. My Facebook is Facebook slash work on your game. Also, it's I'm going to cross post it to my business group, which is uh, Facebook groups called Six Figures and Growing. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Wednesday. Work on your game. We out of here.